Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JTO Sullivan. Today, Kenny Pickett, big win on the road versus the Rams. Fired up for this one. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. <laughs> Before we dive into the video, a quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. This group is the foundation, the bedrock of this channel. If you want to support the channel and you want even more Quarterback School content, you will love the Quarterback School Patreon community. The link is in the video description. As for this video, let's get into it. Kenny Pickett, the Steelers keep winning. Don't throw touchdowns, no problem. Right here, though. Damn, that's a tough sack right out the gate. Now, we're going to try to pull this thing apart analyze it make sense of it but it's hard to play quarterback y'all <laughs> hard to play quarterback when there is a free runner from the d gap down here to the bottom unblocked and it would be one thing if this was five person protection and they were sliding the center going up top which they are but it's not it's six person protection so again when i say it's hard to play quarterback it is a challenge if not impossible to play quarterback when a free runner is running at you like this they are only rushing five so the five down right here and we have six in the pass protection so the five offensive linemen and the back so normally let's just talk about normal normal the center or the uncovered lineman is going to slide one way or the other well they've got a guy on their team number 99 guessing you want to slide to him more often than not so if we're sliding this way meaning that the center, the left guard, and left tackle are taking the three most dangerous that come over there. That's the easiest way to think about it. They've got the three most dangerous. The back then would almost universally have a duel the other side. That means that he's got the third guy over here. Yeah, that's on the running back. Well, I get why you'd want him to go to 99 side too to help chip, but I'm guessing this is not 99. So we've got the back going up there. We've got a free runner right here unblocked. So let's just pretend, okay, that this is the way they want to block it. So they want the center sliding this way. They want the back checking over here. If that's the case and we have a free runner right here, well, then that's on Kenny Pickett to throw whatever this is right here. Hot. Okay, so it's either the pass protection or the quarterback and or the scheme. It's all of the above, most likely. But right here, this can't happen. Second play of the game? Free runner sack? I mean, <laughs> it's for the way that I'm most comfortable categorizing it on this channel, it's just bad football. And we don't need to know who's at fault. You can see the center. He's going left, left. The back, on the left, chipping on the left. We've got four people to block two on the left, right? We've got the center double teaming 99 and the left guard, good. We're getting a chip on the left, okay. Well, then we have to throw hot to the right if they're gonna bring three over there. And it looks like Kenny Pickett is surprised. So that makes me think that it's on the back. It's definitely on the system. Hard to play quarterback like this. That's what the film says, hard to play quarterback like this. Very next play, third and seven, another hot slash pass protection slash structure slash system issue we are hot to the field no one's looking hot our quarterback gets blasted again it's very difficult if not impossible to play quarterback like this the back has a duel both of them blitz it's not hard to see they both blitz in the same b gap watch the back he takes the first most dangerous there it is the next one is on the quarterback now that's most systems so again, you know, it's not a sack, but we're getting hit. And when you turn on the film, there's no hot to that side. Now, again, I'm not saying that this is the only way, like it's against the rules of football for you not to have a hot. I'm just telling you how universally it is most often done at the league level. So the back is blocking. In our terminology, we're going to call this a duel. One to two. He's got those two. If both of them blitz... So they both blitz. Normally, you will have a hot route to the play side. It can be anything. It can be a hitch. It can be a flat. 
It can be these guys continuing to run their route and they just peak back, call it like a peak vertical high. It, it can be so many different things. What it can't be is just running the, and looking this way and never looking at the quarterback, running it like a double post. It can never be that. That's not a high. That's just putting blinders on and playing. Now, again, I'm not throwing these guys under the bus. To me, this looks systemic. And you might say, well, what if they just throw hot to the other side? Okay, it's not illegal. It happens sometimes. The drive route or the shallow here and this over. Okay, so to me, this is just double post with that over and a shallow. Okay, I was around one quarterback that was comfortable throwing what he, what for us at the time was a drive concept, which is essentially a shallow, as the hot over here when his hot was coming from this side. One quarterback. And that guy was number four in Green Bay. And he said he was comfortable and he would do it in practice, but it would almost never show up in the game consistently. This is hard AF to do in a game. To be hot this way and have your hot throw coming from the other side. And what Brett would do is he would used to bail away from it because he knew he was blocked up on the other side so he could bail and make that throw. But again, living on the edge in my opinion. The sound thing to do would be to throw it to the slot hot. Now is the slot hot? Is he looking? Are either of those guys looking? Are they either, Are they any? Is anybody running a quick, quick route? Is anybody looking hot? This is a system issue. Now, it might also be on the O-line. Maybe they need to make the correct decision and see that nickel backed up and potentially hot. I don't know. We're not in their meetings. Not going to pretend to know. can just tell you that it's very difficult to play quarterback like this. And in my opinion, not sustainable to take hits like this. This is the third play of the game. Second pass play. We got pass pro issues all over the place. Next one here. A little slant up top. Now, this is an oldie but a goodie. To me, this is an old school play. Kangaroo, a Mike McCarthy special from the Gulf Coast offense back in the day. The bones of it are still outstanding. And if you're going to play defense like this and get a half field safety with a wide split to a slant, it's going to have a chance to hit right here, especially with the weak side inside linebacker in the A gap. It's a massive hole. Feed 14 as much as possible. Love it. Okay, the Steelers use this a few times in this game both for good big hits. To me, what this play is, and I'm not familiar with anybody else calling it kangaroo, so it's not like a universal play, but it is a slant there. Then the number three, it's a only run out of three by one. Number three on a post, number two on a corner, and then here's kind of why it's called kangaroo. You get that under by the number one. So he lets those things clear, and then he kind of runs this kind of like slant under. Back in the day, it was paired with a wide. And the way that we would read this back in the day would be, you're trying to get the ball here. This is two. This is three. Sometimes these posts and corners would pop. Versus middle field open. That thing might pop. You might see this thing versus like two man, you know, alert. Those types of things like weird looks. But you're really playing this slant to under to wide. And again, the reason I loved it back in the day is the same reason that I love it now. You get four out to one side. So all these eligibles are out over here. So it creates this opportunity for a massive window, especially versus cloud, where that weak side inside linebacker, so here's the second level of that defense, right? These three. Whether this is the nickel or the star, it really doesn't matter. These are the three linebacker types. When the weak side linebacker is standing in the A gap, that's going to create a massive hole in cloud. It's outstanding job. You know, you're just one of those plays where you just don't see it run very much anymore. I love it right here. Catch, one step. Look at the space over there. I mean, how about the route up top and the separation? Yeah, yeah. I think he's terrified. <laughs> Man, my dude's got some wiggle and some burst. That is outstanding. Okay, so if we're going to come sideways at the scheme, and I think we have and we will continue to, we got to at least acknowledge the stuff that's good. Now, again, you know, what the right guard is doing makes playing quarterback difficult. But can he pick it? Put it on him. Nice chunk. Big hit. Let's go. Next one here. Third and nine. Tough down in distance. We're going to get a one-on-one -on -one shot down here to the bottom. Go ball. Love the read. Like the matchup. Like everything except the ball placement. 
the old never in history ball. Never in the history of football has this ball been completed when it's thrown out of bounds. Must throw in bounds. And again, he damn near gets his feet in right there. I'm not going to go back and watch the broadcast, but that looks pretty close. Eh, never mind. College it's in. But I love the matchup. Love the matchup. This is three by one. We talk about three by one coverage a lot in this league. I think of the league as the three by one league. This player right here, the weak safety. So three eligibles up here, one down here. What is this weak safety going to do? Is he going to be eyeballing at all the number three on whatever you want to call this? Poach, tricks, whatever. Do we have a one-on-one -on -one right here? If we do, let's let it rip. One-on-one -on -one go versus a press, outstanding. Throw it right down his line. You cannot fade this thing. OB, cannot, must give our guy a chance down the field. Have to. It's a Everything is there except the ball. Now, you can come at the system all you want, but my guy's burner is going to be hot with this one. He can't throw it for him. He can't throw it inbounds for the quarterback. This is well done, well called, good decision. Everything except the physical execution of throwing the ball inbounds. We talk about it all the time. Okay. Literally, damn near every video, I mention it. The red line in the NFL. You go to any practice field, there's a red line, five line from five yards from the sideline. Those wide receivers are trying to win go balls, win their go routes, best release, meaning inside or outside, get to that red line, stack the DB. So stack the DB means that you're in front of the DB and the DB type corner is behind you running down the red line so that the quarterback has this room to fade it in. Now, you, in a perfect world, you would put that thing right down the red line with him stacked. But this is not a perfect world. This is a world where we're throwing the ball out of bounds. And it just can't happen. And there, there's nothing other than the fact that you acknowledge the film is the film. Can't throw it for you. Damn. Next one here, a little play action one-on-one. -on -one. We'll call it a deep out down here to the bottom. Pretty sweet coverage. Just a better ball. Nice job carving that thing back at the top outstanding anticipation accuracy there's a lot to like right here good pass protection step into that thing let it rip right up on his face outstanding okay so what am i talking about route wise i'm going to pause this thing at the top so when he goes to throw this you can see the anticipation right there tap that thing he's separated right there you know lowercase a for my money and the thing that i want you to watch here is this route at the bottom He's not going to run flat or kind of fall off. He is going to carve this thing down. Okay, so anti-interception or negative angle. Now, this corner, this is a hell of a baseball turn. He's running here. He's going this way with his rear to the sideline, and he turns with the wide receiver. They're almost like synchronized swimmers. So they kind of turn together. You know, I'm going to go ahead and call this. If you're If you're playing the Rams this week, and you see a corner who's got this kind of movement doing this kind of like mirroring the wide receiver, the perfect route right here, okay, is to come up, full on hip and nod this thing, and then keep it going. And it would leave this cat in the dust. Okay, so it's coming, Rams fans, you're welcome. But this right here, even with the good coverage, good offense beats good coverage. So again, watch that corner technique. Watch him baseball turn into this thing. I mean, <laughs> That's sweet DB technique right there. Tight turn. Coming downhill. It's just a better ball. It's a hell of a route, too. It's a good technique on both sides. Love to see it. Kenny Pickett spinning that thing outside the numbers. That's a hell of a throw, y'all. Really a great job. Anticipation, accuracy, arm strength, beating good tight coverage outside the numbers deep down the field. Let's go. Next one here, second and forever. They're going to run old school shallow cross, hit the tight end over the ball on the deep hook. Now, to me, this is, you know, a dinosaur play. It works right here. You know, Kenny Pickett, I'm not sure this is the technique. You want to live in this world where you're hitting your back foot and essentially like running right up the middle. I can see why he kind of sees the space there. You would just hope that his eyes weren't down to be able to see it either, if that makes sense. So what I'm saying this play is, is this deep hook over the ball, and then here's the shallow. So this is old school shallow cross. So verse zone, you settle up. Verse man, you keep running. Okay, it's almost universally paired with a post 
or a go conversion go up top in a kind of deep curl or seventh stop down here something in this curl window different teams read it different ways I think the best way to read it is zone one to two. I think, man, this is really the only thing you got, this runaway. Some teams allow this guy to come out of this thing as a number two to three over here, but it's tough versus man, in my opinion. Quarters, you can alert that post. Zero, alert the post or the go. But right here, when Kenny Pickett hits his back foot, watch him hit that back foot, and he's going forward. Right? I'm not saying there isn't a lane there. I'm just saying most guys would have their eyes downfield. Like there's no reason to get off the spot there. So it's just worth acknowledging the fact that it's a little bit bizarre pocket movement. And it works right here because the target is right ahead of you. So you're running right at your target. But if you were to just hit your back foot and play this thing out like it's designed to be played, it's probably the same outcome. Just instead of taking off to run right there through a lane like your eyes are down, again, hit your back foot. And he's, he's running before he even hitches. So just trusting your eyes. And I, we've already gone through the pass pro issue. So I can understand why you wouldn't trust your eyes. So let me acknowledge that. But you want to trust your eyes and just get through this progression. Nice completion. Next one here, a little naked keeper. I'm going to go to the top of the screen to Kenny Pickett's right. He's going to try to throw the comeback on the run. And this thing just sails inside on him. So just a little bit inconsistent with our ball location, our precision. I'm not saying this is an easy throw on the run. Naked keeper, no to the flat, no to the over, yes to the comeback. And we just leave that thing inside. Again, we've seen him make throws outside the numbers. Maybe not necessarily off platform on the run, but we've seen him drive the ball and he makes a number of good throws outside the numbers in this game. It's just the consistency of it. So here's usually the number one. The number two is usually the over. And then it's usually paired with this kind of comeback or hinge out top. So you would read this thing just one right here, two right here, and then usually three right here. Two and three can be switched sometimes. And Kenny Pickett does damn near everything right except the ball location. So fake, come out with a plan, carve that thing downhill. So he's running towards the target. The ball location is just inside as opposed to out on the sideline where you want. And again, to me, missing by yards, not a small miss. But one of those things where you just kind of take for granted that guys in the league make this type of throw look easy. I mean, there's no pressure around him. You know, theoretically, he could probably set his feet and make that throw as well. But it's just a tough look when you kind of like the consistency that you need to be able to, you know, drive the ball down the field. He's got flashes of it. And I think it almost makes it more frustrating when you see the flashes of it. And then you see ones like this that look like it should be almost easier like you can see the wide receiver up top hinging open. Put that thing on the sideline as opposed to back inside. That's tough. Just a little inside and incomplete. Next one here, third and nine. We've got a bunch of questions about this one. So third and nine, nothing's there. It ends up being kind of a scramble, throw away, you know, live to fight another day, punt. For me, I've got questions both scheme-wise and decision-wise. So decision-wise from eight, you know, he's got one-on-one -on -one to 14 down here to the bottom, to the boundary. I think he does a great job later in the game taking advantage of it. For whatever reason, he just doesn't right here. So this idea that, hey, we've got one-on-one -on -one right here. And even if this safety stays in like a quarters and doesn't truly go like three-by-one poach or tricks, this is a this is a winner. Like, like that's the matchup we want. I don't even care who the other corner is. We've got to get 14 going like that. So to me, that's where the ball goes matchup-wise. If for some reason, say you hate it, say they're really doubling him, he's really over the top. Well, then this concept of running like a slow corner and a five-yard in with a five-yard in, it's third and nine. If that's the case and you're playing quarterback, you just got to come out here and throw this, let him get tackled and punt it. You can't turn this down. So we're either turning down the matchup down here, which... Is not a good decision by the quarterback or we're turning down whatever this is to the front side which i would argue is not great scheme because both these guys are probably not going to get first downs on third and nine so it's just one of those things where you know it's so disjointed it doesn't make sense the decision the matchups the concepts you know again he throws these back shoulders later in the game makes them work down here to the bottom that's open 
if you work up top, the number two is open. The number one is open. Now, does it happen fast? Do I like the tight ends release? You know, no, no, it doesn't. It's not good. But we got to throw it. There's no reason to go, right? There's no reason to bail either. So it's it's just hard to make sense of this offense where you see things that like, you know, who's in the wrong? Who knows? You know, I still don't think you have to bail. Just stay in there. And obviously you need the running back to do better than a one-pump chump here. But like, that ain't it either. Dang. No chance on that one. Halftime. You dig the channel and you haven't already. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. I sincerely appreciate you subscribing to the channel. It means a lot to me. So thank you for doing that. Again, the quarterback school Patreon community, great way to support the channel and get even more quarterback school content. So if you're interested in any and all of that, the link is in the video description. We also have quarterback school courses. Now these courses are the premium content available through the channel. If you enjoy the way that I talk and teach ball, you will love the courses. We've got a number of different courses, RPOs, tempos, pass protection. The best selling course is how to beat every coverage. We even have an entire offensive system and framework available for you. So if you're interested in any and all of those, the link is in the video description, hop over there and enroll. We also have a bunch of free resources available. Check all those out linked in the video description as well. Finally, make sure to follow me across social media platforms. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get back to it. Next one here and right on cue, we catch that one-on-one -on -one down here to the bottom. 14 does work. Back shoulder, that's the same exact throw we should have made on the third nine. Give him a chance. Big body, get the hell off me. It's laughable. Cannot cover him. See the center going 5-0 there. You know, I'm going to do my best not to kind of poo-poo the spacing that it's tethered to. But man, 14... Just let him do that. This is the very similar concept to that kind of kangaroo idea as far as getting four eligibles out to one side. So they've got four eligibles up here. It really doesn't matter what they run. This is the matchup we want. One-on-one, -on -one, back shoulder, take it, throw it. Great. If for some reason it wasn't there, say he fell. Okay, I think they run spacing and like a corner. One of these guys comes out with this and then someone runs to the corner with a wide. Okay, spacing. Not my jam, easily covered in man or match coverage. But right here, one-on-one -on -one down here to the bottom, outside the numbers, we just got to keep letting this eat. And I think they do a much better job, but for whatever reason, it wasn't consistent either. I mean, they didn't take advantage of it every single time. And that's kind of the missing piece sometimes on some of these offenses where you're like, just go back to the matchup. The NFL is so matchup oriented. It's one of those things where just, if that's what it is and they're going to play it like this, you got to make them eat. Now, I will say that just the back foot here for me, I appreciate the fact that he's lined up, sort of lined up. He tries to dovetail here. But watch that back foot. Boom. Kind of almost like goes backwards. Now, it works out right here because that dude's a freak. Next one here, another Canada burner special. Drift post up top. Up top. It's open. We got to throw it. Must throw. It's late. We get a little alligator armish. It's a bummer. Because it's there. You can't throw it for him. The timing is there. Everything is there except the decision and the ability to make it work on time. So what is this? I'll snap it right at the snap. To me, this is play action. And I mean, you see damn near every team run some iteration of play action. We're faking this thing downhill. We get the split flow action with the sniffer. And we're going to run what I'm going to call a drift post. So up. And then you give this guy kind of the freedom on where he wants to take this angle. And all you have to make sure is that you're not throwing it into a quarter safety. So it can't be this look. And or the flat defender cannot drop off into it. So once it goes to what I'm going to classify this as like a half field look, once he gets depth, we've got this window. So now all we need to do is make sure this flat defender, who we are trying to influence, with this motion and whatever this is to the flat and the play action, he's got all these kind of things in his face. As long as he doesn't get depth, we're throwing this thing on time to the left, four or six footwork. Boom. Again, you can see his feet kind of go pitter patter at the top. Da -da 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 -da. Just hit the back foot, right? Throw, throw it, throw it, throw it, throw it, throw it. Now it's too late. And I mean, he still could have caught it. Don't get it twisted. I, I still think 14 should catch the ball, but it's late. You're running through the window, making life way more difficult than it has to be. Just let it rip on time. 
The design is there. Everything is there except the final execution. Dang. Next one here, second and 12. Okay, they're going to run what I'm going to call the bones of all go, two by two. Catch what I would consider probably the toughest coverage or one of the toughest coverages. You either have to work the outside one-on-ones or you got to throw this thing a hell of a lot quicker because this is certainly a turnover-worthy play, interceptable, all bad. Really fortunate that that wasn't a turnover. So what am I talking about concept-wise here? First, the all-go element of it. So here are the seams. Okay, that's Those are the seams. And then here's the all-go, the bones of it. I think they end up doing maybe we'll call them like hinges or stops. They don't they don't run full goes on the outside, but they're running one on one beaters. To me, this is an iteration of brackets. Okay, so to me, this is one on one outside. Okay, one on you can see the press element of it, and then it looks like they're in and outing this by the number twos. So he's getting outside leverage. The safeties are inside leverage right here. Same thing right here. So we're going to be outside leverage by the nickel. We're going to be inside leverage by the safety on the number two. And then the back gets eaten up with the pass protection issue. So you don't get a check down. Normally, if I see this shell and it's all go or all go special, I'm thinking check down screen 75% of the time. But if your back gets eaten up with pressure, you got to do something. And again, the one-on-ones are outside the numbers. You know, for me, it would be fine 14. But right here, we try to kind of force a seam route and really get fortunate that it's not picked off. It's a nice drop from the backer too. But you can see the one-on-ones outside. Again, I, I, I sometimes I feel like this offense makes things shockingly difficult. Just find 14. If he's one-on-one, -on -one, let's throw it to him. Let's make that a habit. Let's make them try to take that away. Because everything else feels more difficult for eight. Yeah, that's a big boy pass protection right there, 22. Go blunt him up. Boom. Looks like hands to the face too, doesn't it? 22 gets snapped back right there. That's definitely hands to the face. Uh, maybe maybe shoulder pad. Either way, fortunate probably should be a pick. I mean, look at all the <laughs> look at all the defenders. Think they think it should be a pick? 97, hands up, four jumping around. 56, looks like he's taking a squat in the middle of the field. Whoo, lucky. Next one here, one of my favorite designs of the game, this little quads down here to the bottom. They're going to fake like they're going to bring him back into the backfield and snap it, and then it's going to be a fake screen. And they're running essentially all go special down here with a little bunch of bluff seams. To me, the tight end is there. In my opinion, Kenny Pickett plays this too quickly. Again, he moves to trouble, kind of like panic scrambles makes that thing unnecessarily difficult, and we throw a check down. Now, does the tight end run the route exactly how I would like? No. Okay, the number four. 83, I think, is the number. Eight. So for me here, this is just, it's a really cool design. You see a lot of teams do this where they put the back out wide, see if it's man or zone, and then bring them back into the thing. Well, occasionally when they'll do that, they'll bring them back, and then they'll quick snap it right here, try to catch them in between coverages. And or it's a really nice way to get an easy screen. So you come out here and just throw like a quick screen. Well, right here, they're going to do everything. They're going to bring them back. Bring them back. But they're going to fake the screen. And all these guys are going to come out and run what I'm used to calling bluff seams. So they're going to pretend like they're going to block. And then they're off. So bluff go. Bluff seam. The problem here with the number three, or really the number four eligible, is that his bluff is too close to the number three. So by the time he gets over there, it takes just a little bit too much time. You would love for him to bluff this thing and then get inside and into this special area. So the spacing here with the three and the four is really the issue. But really, Kenny Pickett, man, don't rush this thing. This is a trick em dick em. Like, you got to let this thing play out. There's no pass pro issues here. Just let this guy sort itself out. Trust that he'll get in there and rip it to him. This is open. This is a turn down. Okay, and it's not one of those like unique, uh, you know, one of those things where he, you, you're not surprised that this is like an alert. You're taking a shot here. This is a double move or fake screening. Look at the screener down here. Throw his hands up. You see these guys come off like they're blocking. And then you can see 83 pop right there. I mean, that that's a good chunk. Like the burner's going to be on fire with this one. What do you want him to do? 
You can't throw it for him. So it can be both the system being frustrating, some pass protection issues, but then there are these ones where you turn on the film and it's either a turn down, we're like panic moving. Why are we moving? Why is he looking back to the left? What's to the left? The double moves are to the right. Why are we moving into the pressure like this? It's just really frustrating, man, more than anything else. I think that's the thing for me. When you turn on the film, there were some opportunities and, and we're making life way too difficult. Now we catch fire though. Fourth quarter, third and eight, beautiful little return route down here by the number one. I love this concept. This is an outstanding call. Nice job from Kenny Pickett putting it right on him. It allows for the yak, for the missed tackle, big chunk on third down. This is how it's done. Absolutely outstanding here. Ball's thrown right where it needs to be. Put it on him. Again, could you make the argument that he unnecessarily moves in the pocket? I personally think you could. You know, moving towards your target like that sometimes just happens naturally as well. I really like this design. So this design for me is we are going to run the number two on the bunch, the point man on the bunch. He's running across on this shallow. We're going to run it with an in up top. So you got multiple runaways there. This little return or loop route that where the ball ends up going, another runaway. Now the only part here that I don't love is that we're running the corner from the number three here. So this thing's going to take forever and never really becomes a viable option in my opinion just because of where it comes from. If you were to switch this, so okay, smart ass, where, how would you like to do this? I'd like this guy to run the corner because it will happen faster and I would like the number two or the number three to either run the shallow or to run the loop. So you could go, I'll might as well draw it up in every color. So there's the loop or you could do the number two on the corner and then switch these. So now this guy runs the shallow and the number three runs the loop. Either way, any option with having the number three run the corner, the, the, the last guy out run the deepest route just doesn't make sense to me, but that's just me. Nice job right here, Kenny, hitting the return or the loop. That's a big chunk. Now, I continue to be critical of the pocket movement, and you be the judge here. Does he have to move off the launch point? Does he have to move to the left? No. I mean, to me, the answer is no. Heel click, heel click. He overcomes right there and throws an absolute strike. Missed tackle, and now it's a chunk. Let's go. Nice job running through an arm tackle as well. Big chunk. Next one here, kangaroo again. We're going to work that slant to the bottom. Again, getting four people out to the top makes the will and the A-gap match to the four eligible side. We catch cloud to the slant again. Again, it's a massive hole. Really nice job. I love this from Canada going back to the play that worked. I want to make sure I really kind of give the flowers when they're deserved. And right here, You've got them by alignment. They're, they continue to line up to this three by one, four eligibles out to a side with a cloud to 14 and the will in the A gap. Watch 53, the linebacker on the bottom hash. Watch him turn to the fourth eligible. I mean, that is stealing down here to the slant. Look at how big that window is. Old school kangaroo making an appearance, paying off. Love to see it. Maybe don't love the antics at the end, but you do you if you keep catching and producing. I don't care. Love the footwork here from Kenny as well before we get pulled. One step. All his cleats in the ground. Ball out on time. Strike. Up on the face. Let's roll. Yes, please. Next one here. Stay on the heater. Keep working 14 to the boundary down here to the bottom. They're going to get to four eligibles to a side again with a little innovation with the motion and the formation. Back shoulder. Yes, this is working a matchup. Let 14 eat. Again, what this does to the coverage here, how they decide to essentially ISO up 14 outside the numbers, you got to be able to take advantage of this. So what I'm saying, I love the formation. To me, this is an empty three by two. Right, Three eligibles up top. We've got two eligibles down here. We're going to end up working this one-on-one -on -one, okay, at the end of the day. That's great. Back shoulder, that throw is beautiful. But the design element, okay, that part you attribute to Canada, is we're going to get to that fourth eligible again over here. So what are they going to do with this weak safety? 
Are they going to true double him, true bracket him, or is he going to be hunting up the number four over here? What are they going to do with the linebacker type? Is he hunting up the number three or the number four? If so, this is there all day. Keep eating. Keep going back. That is something that they just kept doing, and I love it when teams do this. Keep going back to the well. Keep going back to the well. Beautiful throw from Kenny Pickett. Back shoulder, right on the shoulder. Let him eat. Again, you Look at 53, the linebacker. Because they're in five down, he's got to get way over there. One-on-one, -on, -one, on the body, on the break. Let's roll. This next one is my favorite throw from this game from Kenny Pickett. Speed out up top, a little spray out. Three no hitch. Capital A, y'all. Line up for it. A anticipation speed out. Beautiful job. Beautiful throw. Accurate. Arm strength. Triple A. Watch him hit his back foot. Boom. <laughs> With his back. Eating a linebacker right in his face. Look at that back cleat. All his cleats in the ground. Outstanding torque. Can't really get through the throw. Dot. Oh my goodness. That's as good as it gets. You can't. You actually cannot do it better than that. Really a great job. So what is this route? To me, when I call it a spray speed out, that just means that we're coming from kind of a spray out stem as opposed to that traditional kind of straight stem. So we're going to spray this thing, and then we're going to speed out it. Okay, and the timing, A, beats the leverage. So if the leverage is outside leverage, right, he's outside the number one here who's running the route. So you've got to throw it with great arm strength, great accuracy, dot, okay, right where it needs to be. Underline, bold, strike through, italicized. How can we do italicized? Something like that. All of the above. Straight up awesome quarterbacking. This is what it's all about. Fourth quarter, tied game, dropping a dot like this. Not a way to battle eight. Hell yes. You know, I'm going to pause it just at the top just so we can all enjoy it. Let it wash over you. Look, he's separated right there. The corner's outside leverage. We're not out of the break yet. Straight up awesome quarterbacking. Dot. Dot. I love it, man. That's awesome. On the road, tie game, fourth quarter. Ripping that kind of ball, man, that's got to feel awesome for him. Next one, another awesome rep. This one to really ice this thing. Third and three. They're going to give you some BS simulated pressure, really just cover two. And you're going to get the absolute perfect route called open. But I love Kenny Pickett dialing it up and delivering it. This is third and three. We're ripping a whole shot right down the middle of the field. They give us this BS coverage, and we're able to make them pay. Absolutely love it. This is such a good job from Kenny Pickett. So what am I talking about when I say BS simulated pressure? I'm talking about at the end of the day, okay, and I really don't care who they are, these seven people, we're going to call this guy up at the line of scrimmage, they could all pressure us, but only four of them end up blitzing, and I really don't. it really doesn't matter which four. So there is no pressure. It's simulated pressure. That's what that sim is. So sim, and then they're going to play cover two behind it, or 22 because it's probably sub. And all we're going to do is rip this whole shot right down the middle of the field, running Scott free versus middle field open. Okay, so all that BS simulated pressure, third and three, wide open, free access, nobody in our way. We see it. We don't panic. We throw a strike. This is outstanding quarterbacking. Third down, you're going to see exotic shit like this. Stand in there and deliver a strike. And there's nowhere else to go with the ball. It's a whole different conversation about whatever the hell routes those guys are running on the outside in the cloud corners. Not for me, structurally. But man, Kenny Pickett, finding the one guy that's going to win, throwing a strike for a big chunk and icing this thing. On the road, fourth quarter. Have yourself a fourth quarter, Kenny Pickett. That's pretty awesome. Great job. Big time throw. Nice win. Let's roll. So that is a wrap. Kenny Pickett, the Steelers, nice win on the road. Wow. Really impressive fourth quarter. Thought Kenny Pickett kind of battled through those first three quarters where it was kind of like business as usual, if I'm being honest. When I think about this offense and maybe some of the struggles versus systematically, pass protection-wise, probably some inconsistencies from the quarterback play, all of those things kind of still there. And then in that fourth quarter, they just did their thing.
Kenny Pickett throwing the ball accurately, driving the ball down the field, playing with great anticipation. Really fun to see. It's all about can we take that and then put it into the entire game, I think, moving forward as far as what they do offensively. So thank you so much for hanging to the end. I will see you next time. Have a good one.